Let's do some makeup. Um, gonna do three layers of under eye concealer today. I'm gonna start here where I need the lip. So that was the Chantecai 4W um, Real Skin Plus. I love that formula actually. It feels very um, creamy and hydrating, but extremely full coverage, which I love. Um, this is the Neutrogena Radiant Cream Concealer. And then I want also a little bit of the Wander Beauty Nude Illusion Foundation. Um, this is light medium. And the three of these together combined. I like the Power Rangers. <laughs> um, and honestly, I could use that Nude Illusion all over my whole face, but because I have it staring at me, I'm going to use my Chantecaille Future Skin in the color Shea, just, just to warm up my skin tone overall and make it a little, a little more gold and a little tanner. All right, well, I was waiting for my husband to leave, but he's gonna leave on his own time, so paint by numbers. And then I just have a new sponge and I, soaked it in water and wring it out before I start this process because it just makes it so the sponge does not drink up as much of your product. I find it makes the application way smoother and gives you this really luxurious kind of like buffed out finish. And you know, I've been putting my makeup on mostly with my fingers for the last couple months just because honestly, I kept forgetting to order these off of Amazon. Um, and I, I have to say that works really nicely. Our our hands and fingers are our best tools with makeup application, but I found like sometimes it was not quite as even and blended as it is with a sponge. So I'm very happy to have you back. And I'm just pulling that product up, really using all of that lightness we created underneath the eyes to really lift the eyes up, lift the eye shape, create the illusion of no shadows and no under eye bags. Hurrah. Okay. Let's see. Let's see how this and do we this looks such a good coverage combo. I'm gonna do a little bit more of the nude illusion again just to finish the upward lift and highlighting this under cheek area. And then I use whatever is left on the sponge just to pull um, that nice sort of neutral color over my lids and create a base for my eyeshadow. Okay. And then we'll go back and clean up the brows after I've done the um, sculpting on there. Okay, <clears throat> for eyeshadow, I'm gonna use just this sort of neutral um, tan from the KKW Classic 2 palette. Uh, I'm just wanting like a little bit of a neutral buff tone. No shimmer in here, just neutralizing any blueness, any veins, any discoloration over the lid. And then I'm gonna go back with the same color I will be using as blush and just warming it up a little bit. I love carrying over the same thing I'm using on my cheeks onto my eyes because it's matching and looks very coordinated and beautiful and it's easy. All things I like. <laughs> um, so that is the uh, Flower Power Cheek Shade from Chantecaille um, and this pretty pink. Same brush as I used before, I'm just sweeping that over my lid and you'll see this is such a gorgeous color on the cheeks as well. Working it a little bit into that socket area so it creates that dimension we like. 
without being too deep or heavy set, which I find can make me look a little sleepy. Um, for eyeliner, I'm now using the um, L'Oreal Infallible 16 Hour Never Fail Eyeliner. 16 Hour feels like a random number. I'm clear why that was the choice, but I'll take it. Um, okay, so for the outer eye, I'm just going to, you know, my, my old trick was to go to the widest part of your eye and then just draw a straight line out and that creates a really pretty like upward lift, but it's a thicker line. I really want to keep it very close to the lash line today, but still create that upward lift. So I'm really working it into the root of the lashes here and then only kind of bringing it up at the outer edge to keep it really tight and clean and um, still blended. You know, precision is important, but I think ultimately you want it to feel a little bit like buffed out so that it has that really soft, natural look to it. So keeping it close to the lash line for the first draft, the first sort of um, once over on the lash line and then just lifting up this outer corner and lots of little flicks of the pencil as opposed to a big long dragging of the pencil. And then I like to go over this with, I'm using like a very thin but soft um, brush. This is essential liner from Bare Minerals. And I'm going into this sort of dark, um, it's almost like an eggplant. It has definitely a warmish, um, purple to the brown in there, but just pick a nice brown, a nice matte brown that you have. Um, and I go over this line. This helps, it was when I'm, when I want it to really smudge and blur, I'll use an angled liner brush. But in this case, I want it to stay pretty tight on the line and just sort of trace over what I'd already done with the pencil, deepen the shade a little bit with this eye shadow color, and then finish drawing it into the center of my eye where I, I hadn't taken the pencil past this point. So I'm just finishing the line out with this sort of soft, whoa, you're about to fall right off my window. <laughs> this is gonna be, that completes our makeup tutorial for today. Enjoy your day. <laughs> uh, why am I just sticking to the window? We're back, we're back hopefully <laughs> for the time being. Um, again, going to do the same thing on this side with that same pretty dark brown liner. And when I'm not talking and trying to make sense of it with words, I can do this whole thing in like five minutes, which is awesome. Um, because sometimes I'm not looking to do a whole lot more than that. But then I come back and I start seeing little, little misses like this. And then I gotta come back and fix them. And then I start going up higher, and then I start extending the wing out. Oh, there he is. There's that husband of mine. Goodbye. <laughs> I love you. Goodbye. <laughs> You're in the video. Just so you know. And I just go back with a Q-tip and pick up anything that has fallen down. Um, any little cleanup I wanna do out here just to refine the line I can also do. You can um, also take this Q-tip back and just sort of smudge it over the line if you wanna create an even more blurred effect, but it does take the product off eventually. So um, it just depends how like present you want your makeup to be. <laughs> Or if you kind of were just doing that for fun and want to take it all off, there you go. Taking that same sponge with the same little leftover product on it, just again, cleaning up underneath, which is another reason I love the sponge. Um, brows, uh, Tom Ford Gel Source Fiber Brow Gel in the color Taupe, I believe. Yeah, Taupe, that's what I use. Um, and this is what I love when I just want like gentle definition and a little bulking of the brow. I'm not going to go back and color in with an actual pencil, which I love as a look, but it's a little 
um, stark on me for daytime. It just gets very dark and very serious um, very quickly. So this is a really nice product that I use just to like fluff the brows up and draw and pull them up and um, fill them in in the parts where I have any gap, any any gap, any gapping, um, or. Is that too much, do we think? Is that like a very swept up, <laughs> caught in the wind tunnel experience? <laughs> I like this side better. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this down a little bit and just clean it up. And then what I like to do is go with a clean Q-tip over uh, the sort of perimeter of the brow and pick up anything that was not intentional, since I do use a little bit of a heavy hand with that brow gel. And this, I think, keeps it really tight and clean looking, um, but at least that definition in place. And then the same thing with the same sponge, clean it up. Okay, sometimes when I want just a little bit of an extra lift, I will go back with that same Neutrogena um, concealer that we used under my eyes and put one dot underneath each of the um, eyebrows. And then I'll just use a little, any fluffy brush that you have that's clean and just press it into the skin and blur it and fluff it over the highest part of the brow bone, which just creates a nice little uplift at the top of the eye shape. And also cleans up underneath the eyebrow if there was any, um, you know, places that you caught out of the lines places that you colored out of the lines I can speak. Um, one thing I find annoying about this shape is it's hard to get like precisely into the spot that you're going for. So if you have a flat brush that is more appropriate for concealer application, definitely use that. But I'm working with what I had in my makeup case today. So that's what I got and that's what you'll get. And it works just fine. Um, okay. Uh, we're down to the wire. We're going to put on a little bit of powder and then I will show you how I do the cheeks and then my eyeshadow, I mean eye mascara, and then we're done. Um, uh, this is the Chantify Perfect Blur in light medium um, powder. I love this powder. It's such a soft, fine formulation and I just press it under my eyes here. It immediately tamps down any shine, um, but it never looks cakey, which is my nemesis. Okay, over the chin, in between the eyes, and then I just sweep it right across my forehead there. Make sure you get the nose. And then whatever's left on the brush, I just quickly fluff it over the face to um, set what I have going on before going back with the Anastasia color Tawny. This is the powder bronzer, no shimmer in this, which I love because it really helps me sculpt my face without adding too much sheen so that it can look as natural as possible. The sheen is great in places, I find, especially to add a bit of highlight, but um, when you have it all over your face, I feel like it, it just reads very present. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. Under the jaw, sort of creating that, that number three on both sides that lets you seem very sculpted. Um, then for the base of the blush look we're creating, I'm using the Ilia Color Haze Multi Matte Pigment in the color Waking Up. I adore this product. I love, I've always loved a cream blush. I feel like it's um, just the most natural looking flush and you can really place it exactly where you want it. And this product I feel like is a thick enough sort of like paste that it doesn't just, you know, bleed all over your face. You can really paste it where you want. Um, the cheeks. And I kind of keep it in this triangle section. Um, I don't want too much redness in towards my nose, but I do want it to seem natural. So I'll use like whatever is barely left on my fingertips just to keep blurring and drawing the line in. And then once that sort of color base is set, then I go back with that blush color that we love um, from Chantecaille and 
press that, just fluffing it over the color of that um, pigment. And I feel like it just makes it even a little bit more punchy and a little bit fresher looking. Then I take the Kosas. Where are you? <gasps> My Kosas is missing. I'm gonna go find that. Um, it's a real, oh man. Oh, I put my purse, I have a purse. Uh, quick eyeshadow, uh, quick, quick mascara. Wow, I let that blush settle. Sorry, I gotta focus. Focusing on the eyelashes. Don't worry if you color outside the line a little bit. No, I have to say, I wiggle and I pull. That's my sort of initial application process for the mascara. But then once that coat is on, I go back and I just make sure to pull out the outer lashes so that you get as much of a winged effect as possible. Wiggle and pull, wiggle and pull, deposit that pigment. Pull out the lash. The edge, pull it out, pull it out, pull it out. Mm -hmm. Gosh, mascara, man. What the heck? What did we do without it? Take a clean Q tip and go back and pick up anything that accidentally got placed where it should not have been, including under the eyes if you got any. When you're applying there, if there's anything more stubborn, just blot it out. As often as possible, I'm not dragging, I'm I'm pressing and blotting. Okay, let's do a little lipstick. And then I will go and find that Kosas and I will be done. This is the KKW lip liner in 90s supermodel. And I, I just color over the Cupid's bow here. And I really love this color for a slight overline because it's almost exactly the same shade as my lips. Okay, and honestly, you can do it just with the this shade if you want, um, or if you want a little bit extra, and you fell off the mount again. <laughs> but I was saying you can either just leave it as the liner with just a little bit of gloss on top, or you can add um, your lipstick right on top. This is the Sisley color number 11. Just a really pretty pinky nude. I went and grabbed my highlighter. Um, this is Tropic Equinox from Kosas and I just stick my finger in both sides and then sort of dab it together and use it to create this really pretty highlight over my high parts of my cheeks. I use whatever is left to go over my nose and bring back a little bit of that velvetiness that I took down with the powder to begin with. And that is the end of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have a great day.